Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope we're having a wonderful day out there so far. And we've got a lot to discuss today as a big time storm system is getting ready to make its way ashore here, starting in the West Coast, bringing plenty of impacts out that way and eventually sliding eastbound. And that's where we have the potential for some southeastern snowfall. Uh, now, I'll tell you what the trends have been like overnight throughout the video. We'll definitely take a look at the latest uh, potential snowfall projections and uh, kind of who has the best shot at seeing any snow, if any at all. Uh, and I, I will ask if you haven't already subscribed definitely consider doing so like the video if you like it comment let me know what you're seeing out there and definitely consider sharing the video with somebody that you think might find some value in it and I also just want to say thank you the past two videos have done very well we've had a lot of growth on the channel so again it means the world to me and we're getting very close to 8,000 subscribers now and the big goal here is 10,000 I'm hoping to get there by the end of February if we can so again if you're a regular viewer and you haven't already subscribed just make it easy on yourself hit the button and then hit the bell for the latest notifications I think with all that said, we can go ahead and jump right into it because, again, we do have a good bit to discuss today. Now, starting off with satellite imagery, again, relatively quiet through much of the country, kind of the quiet before the storm. Now, with that said, we do have uh, one kind of uh, clipper system, this Alberta clipper that has moved in out of Canada. That will slowly uh, con uh, continue to work off towards the south and east today, bringing with it some mountain snow and uh, some lower elevation rain showers. And we'll take a look at that here uh, on future radar. Now, outside of that, out west, uh, back here, and this is our big storm system. I know it's kind of way off in the corner of the frame there, but uh, that's what we're watching for that big storm potential going throughout this week, and it is slowly working its way closer to the west coast, and really, the uh, impact should begin to be felt out that way as early as tomorrow, and likely lasting for a while, as we have multiple storm systems uh, likely to work in through the west coast, and then eventually through the east. Now, radar imagery as well as watches and warnings. Again, this is one of the more quiet mornings so far that we've seen on this map in a while. And uh, with that said, though, we do have a you know kind of skinny band of precipitation, likely snow falling up here into much of Michigan, uh, with rain to the south of there through Indiana and Illinois, uh, as this kind of band again of precipitation moves on through. Now, as we end this afternoon, this will slowly continue to work off towards the south and east, eventually bringing some mountain snow through West Virginia and North Carolina, and we'll definitely watch that uh, for, again, uh, some wintry potential, and we'll even look at snowfall totals here in just a moment. Now, back towards the west, a little bit more active. You'll notice, at least in the watches and warnings uh, department, we have winter storm watches now in effect for much of the Sierra Nevadas and even into the mountains of Nevada and uh, Utah there. Again, that's for that big storm system on the way. They're going ahead, getting ahead of the gun here, adding those watches. In fact, we even have some flood watches as well as wind advisories and high wind warnings out here through much of coastal California, at least the northern half of the state. Uh, again, as the storm is really going to pack a punch when it moves ashore. All right, let's start off by talking about this clipper system. I'll tell you who's going to see some snow out of it, who's going to see a little bit of rain, and who's really not going to see much at all. And uh, again, this is uh, doing a pretty good job at showing what we're seeing out there right now. Some, uh, you know, snow definitely falling, I think, through Michigan as we're having a quick band of that snow moving on through. South of there, though, just rain here through much of Indiana and Illinois working on through. Now, as we move this further ahead throughout today, getting into this afternoon, uh, that band of snow slowly continues to work south and east. About uh, By the time we're hitting noon, 1 o'clock, uh, likely seeing that snow into much of uh, western Ohio here. Could see some light snow out of this with rain to the south of there, kind of into uh, eastern Kentucky. Now, going further into the day here, uh, you know, this precipitation shield slowly again works off south and east, likely a bit of a rain-snow mix through much of Ohio. Some of you seeing more snow than others, especially on the kind of uh, northern periphery of this precipitation, more likely to be snow uh, than kind of on the southern end where we're going to see more rain than anything else here into uh, sections of, uh, again, eastern Kentucky there and even portions of western West Virginia. Now, as I move this further ahead into overnight tonight, this is about 10 p.m., this uh, you know short wave here kind of eventually runs into the Appalachia chain. And with that, we are going to see some higher elevation mountain snow. Uh, now, this is going to be really about 3,000 feet and up, and really even higher than that, about 4,000 feet and up is where we have enough cold air to get snow out of this. And then just some scattered rain showers for the lower elevations here into eastern Tennessee, uh, northern Georgia, the western Carolinas, uh, even into western Virginia, likely seeing a couple rain showers out of this overnight tonight. And uh, by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, here I'll move this ahead about 5, 6, 7 a.m., 
Uh, we're really just left with a couple, uh, you know, pockets of drizzle and uh, scattered showers. Can't even rule out a little bit of heavier precipitation here into the eastern Carolinas tomorrow morning. Uh, but again, the good news is by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon here, I think uh, we kind of begin to slowly dry out with just leftover scattered showers. Uh, again, kind of uh, east of I-85 and south of there through North and South Carolina throughout the day Wednesday. And then here we go going into Wednesday evening. That storm system now well offshore. And uh, we just have much nicer conditions working in for our Thursday afternoon. Now, at the same time, as we get a Thursday afternoon, we will watch a, uh, another kind of short wave kind of eventually moving up into the northeast here. And I'll move this even ahead into uh, Thursday morning. You'll notice that kind of dive southward. That's another uh, Clipper-esque system, if you will, and that could bring a little bit of snow. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that here just a moment later on. All right, snowfall totals. Uh, again, this is including uh, everything from midnight. So most of this has already fallen here, but likely uh, most of you waking up to about an inch or two of snow on the ground here into much of eastern Michigan. Uh, south of there, though, into uh, sections of western Ohio and eastern Indiana, a dusting to a half an inch of snow is not out of the question throughout the day today. Uh, but again, that'll mainly be on grassy and elevated surfaces, not so much the roadways. South of there into the Appalachia chain, again, going to be very elevation uh, driven here into the higher terrains here of uh, eastern West Virginia. You could see a quick one to three inches of snow. Same story for the highest peaks here into North Carolina, specifically those northwestern facing peaks uh, where, again, one to three inches of snow is not out of the question. An isolated spot or two up in the highest uh, parts of the mountains could see three to five inches, but again, not uh, that much of a blockbuster system, if you will. Just kind of your average winter clipper system through much of this part of the country. All right, temperatures. Well, this afternoon, it's going to be a lot like yesterday. Pretty average January day for much of us. Warming up uh, much more back towards Texas, you'll notice, getting well into the 60s and 70s. But outside of there, again, just kind of what you would expect for a late January afternoon. Uh, temperatures getting into the 50s uh, through the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, and then into the 40s, north of there into Virginia, Kentucky, uh, Tennessee, and then into the 30s, uh, further north from there. But again, I won't uh, bore you by talking about every potential place on the map. Just kind of find where you live and get a general idea idea of your high temperature today. Now, by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, again, I think we get a bit of a cool down tomorrow. As that clipper system works on through, it's going to bring a little bit of cooler air with it. And uh, tomorrow morning, honestly, still much like today, widespread 30s and 40s for most folks uh, outside of the Northeast, where we will likely get below freezing. Uh, but it's going into Wednesday afternoon. I think you notice that it's a tad chillier and maybe even a bit uh, breezier as well, uh, especially down into the Carolinas, where today we could be pushing 55, 56, tomorrow more like 50. Again, as uh, some of that cloud cover and chillier air funnels on in. But again, outside of that, just kind of find where you live on the map for your Wednesday high temperature. And then as we move this ahead into Thursday uh, morning, well, this is really overnight, about uh, 1 in the morning, so maybe subtract a couple degrees from this. But again, probably a little bit colder than this morning and tomorrow morning for our Thursday morning. All right, let's start out west now, and uh, I'm just going to discuss the next uh, kind of 24 hours or so out this way, uh, just because uh, once we get to about 48 hours, that storm system, uh, storm system, excuse me, starts moving on through, and I want to kind of uh, zoom out a little bit before we start zooming in area by area. But uh, here we go. This is this afternoon out west. You'll notice uh, again a pretty uh, nice afternoon for most folks. Now we do have a storm system kind of slowly scraping the coastline of Washington and Oregon here, uh, so could definitely see some scattered showers again within the first hundred miles or so. Of the coast uh, from extreme northern California up the Pacific Northwest coastline, but inland areas and areas south of there, really from San Francisco south through LA, a really nice afternoon today with uh, pretty clear skies and uh, really not much precipitation to talk about. And that continues overnight tonight before eventually we get into our Wednesday morning. And here's that storm system starting to knock on the door. And again, we'll discuss that a little bit more here in a moment. All right, temperatures out this way going into this afternoon. Uh, here we go. Again, a really nice afternoon, I think, for much of Southern California into uh, the uh, valleys of California as well, getting well up into the 70s, pretty likely. Uh, north of there, though, again, a pretty average late January afternoon, maybe even a bit um, above average compared to what you're used to in the temperature department. Now, moving this a little bit further ahead into time, if I can get the uh, clicker to move it further ahead into time. Let's see. There we go. Uh, going into uh, Wednesday morning here, again, a pretty average uh, January morning, and maybe even a little bit warmer than what you're used to. But again, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. Just kind of find where you live on the map here, and that'll be your Wednesday morning temperatures uh, before eventually getting into Wednesday afternoon as that storm system starts to move ashore. Uh, bringing cooler temperatures through Northern California northbound, but still pretty warm south of there where the precipitation is yet to move on in, uh, specifically down through Arizona and Southern California. 
All right. Uh, now let's kind of discuss the storm system. Again, obviously, it's kind of the uh, big thing on a lot of people's mind here. So let's uh, kind of break it down for you. And we'll start here with Wednesday afternoon, our 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, this map just kind of shows us where we have troughing and ridging in the atmosphere and uh, really helps us kind of understand what the pattern is looking like. Uh, now, again, this is Wednesday afternoon, as I mentioned, and uh, you'll notice we've got a couple key players on the field, really three. We've got one big storm system off the coast, we've got a big ridge in the central part of the country, and then we've got a trough and another storm system off the southeast coast. Uh, that trough and uh, ridge, or excuse me, that trough and storm off the southeast coast, that's the clipper system that's working on through right now. Uh, the big storm out west, well, that's our big storm that we've been talking about. And then this big ridge in the central part of the country, that is what has led to this uh, kind of above average uh, temperatures that we've seen over the past couple of days. Now, as I move this a little bit further ahead into time, uh, I'm going to stop it again here going into Friday morning. At this point, that storm out west really starting to work much further inland. And at the same time, we get another kind of trough here up into the northeast. Uh, that's that kind of uh, next little clipper system or short wave I mentioned earlier in the video that could bring some uh, snow to you folks in the interior northeast. But what's really important with this area is the transportation of cold air it could potentially bring. Uh, now, obviously, this is going to be a little bit of low pressure here. Uh, we're, also gonna, we're also going to have excuse me, high pressure kind of in the center here. Uh, they're going to work into tandem a little bit here and try to funnel in cold air towards the south and east. And you can notice that here by the way the isobars are kind of kinking uh, down towards that general direction. Now, as we go closer into the weekend, uh, the placement and the orientation of that trough is so important. Uh, latest model guidance has moved it a little bit further offshore, uh, much like we saw yesterday. And uh, with that general idea here, um, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult to get the cold air south. Uh, you would ideally like it to be tilted a little bit more this way, a little more positively, if you will, and also a little off towards the um, west there. Uh, so right now, there's not going to be all that much cold air transportation, and uh, that's going to play uh, you know huge or pay huge dividends into who sees wintry weather and who doesn't. Now, the one part of the storm system that has maintained itself and stayed very consistent in the models is the track, uh, and this continues to look like a very good track. Here we go. Uh, into Sunday overnight and early Monday, again, low pressure right over uh, the southern tier of the country here, right along the Gulf Coast and making basically a perfect track here uh, for winter weather fans through sections of the southeast. The big question, though, still, again, is who is going to have enough cold air in place, and will anybody have enough cold air in place? before eventually that storm system kind of begins to work on out of here off the east coast and at the same time we're getting another storm back west here uh, that is likely working on through. So again a very active next week ahead and uh, let's go ahead now and dive into kind of what this could potentially look like on radar. All right, latest GFS model, here we go, going into Wednesday afternoon. Here's that storm system now working into the west, bringing uh, rain for, again, much of the coastline. And eventually, by the time we're getting into overnight Wednesday and into early Thursday, big-time mountain snow, especially into the Sierra Nevadas, where uh, we could be counting snowfall totals in the feet uh, kind of range and not so much in the uh, inches kind of uh, department. So as we go further into Thursday, again, that uh, storm continues to lash the west coast, bringing plenty of rain uh, into the coastal areas and the valleys, plenty of mountain snow, and eventually, uh, getting overnight Thursday into Friday, that piece of energy works across the Rockies, and uh, by the time we're going into Friday afternoon and overnight Friday, eventually into Saturday, we've now got our storm system kind of developing a defined area of low pressure here. You'll notice right into uh, kind of where New Mexico, Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas meet there, and, uh, you know, that likely to continue to bump up the precipitation totals. So I think, uh, again, now or really starting Wednesday afternoon through Friday is going to be the worst of through the West Coast. Eventually getting Friday into Saturday, the Rockies get in on their turn. And uh, especially areas of Colorado here, as the storm system really cranks up here, uh, going again into our Saturday afternoon, plenty of snow likely to fall throughout the day Saturday, potentially even in the Denver area, uh, back into the higher terrains, much of the four corners seeing mountain snow out of this and even mountain snow up through Idaho, uh, Montana, and Wyoming as well, before uh, eventually the storm kind of finally starts to pull eastbound going Sunday into Monday. And at the same time, here's our next storm we need to watch uh, going into early next week, but we'll save that uh, discussion for another day. 
All right, rainfall totals out here. Again, most of it falls, I think, into Northern California where we could see two to four inches, isolated spots, four to six inches here of rain. And uh, surrounding areas through really everyone in the West Coast is likely going to get some sort of precipitation out this, uh, out of this, excuse me, uh, although some folks a little bit more than others, obviously. So definitely watching that here. Uh, but flooding could become a concern here into coastal California, I think, uh, Wednesday through Friday, especially here into Northern California and even into South uh, Western Oregon there where a lot of rain is going to fall. All right, snowfall totals. Uh, well, again, a good amount on the way here, uh, here into the higher terrains of Idaho. Again, this is just for the first storm, so this is not including any storm we get early next week. Uh, but you'll notice some of these totals getting well up uh, past a foot, some areas even past two feet of snow into the higher terrains here. And that continues into sections of Montana and then into Yellowstone National Park as well. Again, some of these totals passing half a foot and getting up near the foot mark. Now, south of there, again, the Sierra Nevadas, I think, are going to be the real winners here in the snowfall, uh, you know, department. In some areas here counting 50 inches of snow just through Sunday, and then again, another storm likely early next week to add on top of these totals. Uh, so plenty of snow for just about everyone here in the higher terrains of California. Uh, but even here into Nevada, you'll notice again some higher snowfall totals, about half a foot to a foot. And then Utah as well, some of these ski resorts going to get uh, more than a foot of snow as well. And same story through Arizona, New Mexico, and even into the higher terrains of the Rockies into Colorado. All right, that's the West Coast. Now let's talk the East Coast a little bit. Let me back my map up, uh, kind of gave you some spoiler alerts there. We'll uh, pick this up on Saturday morning, and uh, this is kind of what the stage is setting. Uh, this is our GFS model from this morning. So this is the latest run, just ran uh, not even an hour or two ago at the time I'm recording this. And uh, here we go. We'll move this further ahead into time through Saturday afternoon. You'll notice a, a pretty rainy day here through Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, much of Arkansas and Louisiana. The good news is right now, uh, models aren't showing too much instability, so I think severe weather will be pretty limited here, if any at all, uh, for our Saturday afternoon. Now, can't rule out a couple strong storms here near the Gulf, as we normally see with these types of setups, but uh, overall speaking, uh, the weather should stay relatively tame, just quite rainy, and unfortunately, we've had so many rain out, so much rain, not so many rain, uh, but so much rain out this way over the past week or two, really don't need that much more, but we'll definitely have to watch for some flooding concern here. Now here we go, overnight side, uh, Saturday into Sunday, and uh, here's the storm system, slowly working eastbound. Now at the same time, that trough that is kind of our only hope for cold air here is now pretty well off into the northeast. Uh, so what you're really going to want to see, if you want snow into the southeast and mid-Atlantic, is you want this trough to scoot further off here towards the west, and you also want it to kind of dig a little bit further south, and hopefully kind of mesh with this storm or interact with it, and have them kind of work into tandem and have the storm bring down its cold, its own cold air from that trough. Uh, now, latest GFS model doesn't quite do that. Uh, here we go into Sunday afternoon. Again, still just all rain for much of the south. Uh, rain and heavy in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, and even into Tennessee and Arkansas. And eventually, here we go into Monday morning, February the 5th. And uh, you'll notice we've still got a lot of separation between these two pieces of energy. Uh, that cold air is still locked up further into the north uh, and east, and uh, this uh, moisture, you know, a little bit too far to the southeast. Now, at the same time, this will still be cold. This won't be a warm rain by any means. And uh, as we get into Monday morning, you'll even notice some of the higher peaks in North Carolina here uh, getting in on some mountain snow, definitely, again, where it is cold enough to see it. Uh, now going further into uh, the afternoon of the fifth year, the storm kind of just, you know, continues to strengthen off the Carolina coastline and still just bringing a very cold rain for a lot of folks. Uh, in fact, if I take a sounding here Tuesday morning just to get an idea of the temperature profile, uh, yeah, down here at the surface, uh, you know, a nice 39 degree rain. Uh, so, you know, a little, you know, not very wintry, not uh, snowy by any means, but I will preface this by saying uh, this is just one model, this is just one deterministic run, and we're still about five to seven days from any wintry weather potential. So things can still change, and I'll even show you here a couple other models as well. Now, Tuesday afternoon, that rain's still holding on throughout the Carolinas, and eventually it kind of scoots on out of here. Now, as it does scoot on out of here, the models now finally kind of connect the upper piece of energy and the lower piece of energy, uh, but it's just a little too late here uh, for many folks. Now, one thing I will mention really quickly before we discuss some of the other models is uh, some rainfall potential, and again, it is going to be a problem here. So this is throughout the next week, and we're going to get a lot of rain here through much of um, Arkansas, Louisiana, East Texas, and Mississippi, where we could get two to four inches of rain, not out of the question. And same story for sections of uh, the low country of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, a good amount of rain on the way as well with this storm system. All right, now that we kind of got that intermission out of the way, let's go back to the wintry side of things. 
Now that was the GFS model I showed you. I'm going to show you another model that plays this out a little bit, di a little bit differently. This is our icon model or the uh, German model, if you will. I know we like throwing uh, nationalities on these models. We never call them by their actual name, funnily enough. Uh, but either way, this uh, model is uh, made and produced in Germany, the Icon, so here we go. Uh, let's move this out. This is Saturday afternoon. Again, starts the same, much like the GFS, a rainstorm through Arkansas, Louisiana, eventually working into Mississippi, Alabama. Uh, but what happens, it's a little bit differently here, is we're getting more cold air damming or more cold air advection here into the Carolinas, and uh, that is going to help to bring a higher probability of winter precipitation. And you'll notice as I move this into Sunday afternoon, you're saying, well, it's still all rain. Sunday evening, still all rain. Uh, even overnight Sunday, still all rain. But here we go. Starting Monday morning, we've got snow breaking out into North Carolina on this model. And eventually, as I move this further ahead into time, uh, what happens here is what we want to see. You'll notice all these blue isobars that are up in the northeast start moving southbound, and uh, this storm system connects with this upper trough, and that is going to funnel in cold air onto the back side of the storm. And uh, you get that rain now changing to a very heavy snow through sections of North Carolina, even portions of South Carolina here, overnight Monday into Tuesday, and uh, drops a good pasting of snow here, even into the I-95 corridor eventually. And then finally, uh, the storm tries to even work up the east coast a little bit, going into early next week. So obviously a very different solution than what I just showed you with the GFS. And uh, I don't want you to take away that one model is absolutely right and one model is absolutely wrong. What I want you to take away here is we're still, again, about a week away. And uh, whenever you have two pieces of energy that are so close to each other, it's very easy for the models to change. So they're going to struggle for the next couple of days here. Uh, so I'm sure you'll see some models that show absolute crazy snowfall numbers and, sh and some that show, uh, you know, just a good old fashioned cold rain for hours on end. And uh, the reality is right now, we just don't know what the correct answer is. Now we can lean one way or the other. And right now, unfortunately for the snow lovers out there, the GFS looks a little bit more likely. Uh, but this is also still a very real situation that could occur if we can get these two pieces of energy to merge and kind of mesh together. Now I will also show you the uh, European model. Obviously that's a big one people care about here. So I'm taking a look at the kind of mid-Atlantic here. This is that clipper system that works on through tomorrow. That kind of gets on out of here pretty quickly. And then here we go into this weekend. Uh, here's that rain. It starts working on in Sunday afternoon on the European model. And I'll actually also mention here, uh, no matter what it right, uh, no matter what right now, it looks like everyone starts as rain. So if this does turn into a snowstorm, it's going to be one of those storms that it starts raining, maybe even for a day or more, and then kind of turns to snow on the backside as that cold air is able to kind of do its magic. Now here we go, later on into the European model run, a much more suppressed system than some of the other models, just meaning it's not quite as strong and it's a little further south, but what I will mention is the cold air isn't that far on the European. Again, notice these isobars, see how they're kind of kinking down this way? That indicates to me that we have cold air damming, uh, granted not maybe to the extent you want to see it for a big time winter weather, uh, but if I take a sounding here on Monday morning, uh, into an area like, uh, let me actually move a little bit north, let me take a sounding in the Danville area, I just look at the surface, yeah, we've got a temperature of 32 degrees and a dew point of 21 degrees. Uh, so the cold air is here on the European model, uh, it's just a little bit further north than you would want and the precipitation or the storm is a little bit more suppressed and a little bit further south. Uh, so, you know, I keep kind of hitting this with a bat here, but uh, the two pieces of energy are very close, okay? They could definitely work in a tandem here, and if I do the same thing, take a sounding over Charlotte, obviously showing up as rain here, but temperature of 39 degrees, dew point of 36, uh, that is not far from kind of a wintry sounding, and you'll notice as I move this further ahead, even into Monday afternoon, again the 5th, that cold air tries to wrap into the system a little bit here, and you get a little bit of change over to a wintry mix or even some light snow, uh, on uh, the uh, European model here as the storm is pulling away. And then eventually that cold air again finally catches up just a little too late, as you'll notice by that blue isobar kind of uh, making it all the way down with the 540 line. All right, now another thing I love to do with this range is look at ensemble members. Um, we've taken a look at kind of a, d a bunch of different operational models, but what about the ensembles? It's kind of the real bread and butter of our forecasting at this kind of range. And we'll start with the European ensembles. This is the chance of really seeing accumulating snowfall, so at least an inch of snow falling. And um, you'll notice here on the latest European ensemble data, the chances are not great. Uh, but they are definitely there nonetheless. Now, one thing I want to mention that I think isn't being talked about a lot with the storm, a lot of people are focusing on the Carolinas, including myself, uh, I will admit, uh, but we need to watch folks in Virginia as well. Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, even up kind of uh, into the Atlantic uh, coast a little bit. 
Uh, again, the cold air is much more plentiful there, and oftentimes we see these storms kind of move north a little bit uh, during the uh, you know kind of final trends, and that could definitely be a possibility. And with that potential, uh, snowfall chances are the greatest here in the mountains of North Carolina, and then up into Virginia and West Virginia, uh, where we have a good you know one in five shot here of seeing accumulating snowfall out of the storm. Now, obviously, one in five is not a very big deal. In fact, uh, most people, if you see a 20% chance of rain, you kind of uh, mark it off and say, well, that's not a big deal. So again, take this with a grain of salt, uh, but compared to our normal snow chances around here, definitely higher than normal. And then further south through Charlotte and down into Columbia, much lower chances of seeing snowfall on our latest European ensemble guidance. But that is just one model and one model's ensemble members. If we look at the GFS and the chances that it has for snowfall, uh, you'll notice a much uh, different scenario, although still bullseyeing the mountains of North Carolina and up into Virginia, uh, but some of these totals getting higher even down near Charlotte. Charlotte coming in here at about a one in four chance of accumulating snowfall on the uh, European, excuse me, the GFS ensembles. And same story up here through Greensboro, about a one in five shot, uh, back towards Danville, a one in five shot, and then a higher, obviously, about a one in three shot up here uh, into the mountains of North Carolina. So uh, if we kind of look at the two, here's the uh, European, Here's the GFS, definitely a different, uh, you know, solution and a little bit higher chance of that snowfall on the GFS ensembles. Now, one thing I will mention as well, as I move this further ahead into time, the chances even increase a little bit here along the I-95 corridor. It's not out of the question for the storm to maybe try to move up the coast, just right now doesn't look like the most likely scenario. Now looking at the uh, CMC or the uh, Canadian Models Ensembles, which is also something kind of important to look at, uh, again kind of paints a very similar bullseye over the same areas and it's kind of an in-between in terms of percentages here of the GFS and the European. Uh, so honestly this might be the best to use for actual kind of a good blend of everything and again about a 10 to 20 percent chance of at least an inch of snowfall accumulating here through much of North Carolina, Virginia and then lower chances back down into South Carolina. Now, if we put all this together and look at the blend of models, how much snow is the most likely scenario right now? And again, this is very far out, so take this with a grain of salt. If anything, this is best for just showing general locations. Uh, again, obviously the highest chances right now into the mountains of North Carolina. I think if anybody right now is most likely to see accumulating snow, I would pick there. Next best shot, likely into the foothills of Virginia and North Carolina, uh, where right now if you blend everything together, the highest snowfall members and the lowest snowfall members, again, only about a half an inch showing up here. So uh, not a very large signal, but enough that it's definitely worth mentioning here. And uh, we'll continue to watch the trends over the next couple of days. Obviously, uh, today is Tuesday, and this wouldn't happen until about next uh, Monday, really. So we're still about six days away. And uh, as plenty of you know, I'm sure plenty of stuff can change in meteorology in six days, uh, sometimes even within six hours. So, uh, you know, we'll definitely uh, have plenty of time to continue monitoring this as we get a little bit closer. Uh, now, with that said, I do appreciate y'all watching. If you made it to the end of the video, definitely let me know. And again, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do that as well. Uh, again, we're seeing a lot of growth on the channel and definitely trying to keep that up here as we end January and start February. Alrighty, well, I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.